and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. Usually here on the show, we spend a lot of time talking about corn and soybeans, a fair amount about wheat as well. But today we're going to talk just a little bit about solving root rot issues in pulse crops. Well, one other thing we're going to talk about, Brian, is yield loss. And many times yield loss gets blamed on weather conditions. But let's face it, you planted the same seed through the same planter in the same dirt, and you saw variances out in your fields. What's going on? In some cases, we're seeing variances row to row on the planter. We're going to talk about some of the things you want to look at on your planter going into next season. Well, we've got a weed of the week coming up later in the show and our iron talk time. But first, let's go to our farm basics. How much yield and profit did you lose the moment you put your seed in the ground? A poor stand at planting keeps your crops from reaching their yield potential, and closing the seed trench behind the planter is essential to establishing a good crop stand. The Germinator Closing Wheel from Farm Shop MFG is here to give your crop the strong start it needs for maximum yield. Act now to receive an early order rebate plus free shipping. Get ready for spring planting with the Germinator Closing Wheel. For more information, visit farmshopmfg.com. During our Farm Basics time each week, we talk about some commonly asked questions we get from non-farmers. Well, here's one that we got this fall. Why do some farmers do deep tillage? They completely turn that soil over, make everything black out in the fields. Why do some farmers do that and other farmers do nothing? They do no-till. Well, there are a lot of different ways to farm and I'm not saying there's one way that's right and one way that's wrong. But one of the things that many farmers have found some benefit from is doing some deeper tillage in the soil for a variety of reasons. One would be very prevalent right now, compaction. When farmers have had wet conditions and they've been forced to go out in the field to try to get the crop out before the snow falls, well, they create some ruts out in that field. And the only way to really truly clean those ruts up is to do some deep tillage. So when farmers have compacted area where soil is compressed, the only way they can fix that, is the main way, the easiest way, the fastest way is by doing deep tillage. Back when our grandpas used to farm, they didn't have modern herbicides, they didn't have modern insecticides or even modern planters. So they had to use deep tillage for weed control, insect control, disease control, and just to get a better seed bed come spring. They wanted nothing out there other than just simply black soil in the spring so then they could properly plant their seed. Well, today, with all our advancements, we don't have to do all those things anymore, but nevertheless, it is kind of nice every once in a while just to break that cycle with weeds, insects, and diseases. If, let's say, I did have residue that's been laying out there for two, three years, to do some deep tillage and mix things up again. Well, certainly, as you do that tillage, it does break the residue down a lot quicker. We see the infusion of oxygen into the soil and what happens is the residue turns back into available plant nutrients that future crops can benefit from. So farmers who do deep tillage say, well, you know what? The part of the field I did the deep tillage in, I got more yield, I got more nutrients into my crops. That's a short-term fix, but it is one of the attractive things about doing some tillage. One of the biggest disadvantages in a lot of cases when people have been no-tilling is their fertility is in the top one or two inches of soil, whereas most of their roots are below the top one or two inches in soil. So by simply going out and doing some deep tillage, farmers can stir everything up again, get some of that fertility that's in that top couple inches down into the ground, and that also can lead to more yield. And then in many cases, the farmer can go back to a no-till type situation for many more years once they've fixed what we call nutrient stratification. Well, there are some positive things to doing that deep tillage. There are also some risks like soil erosion and the, soil, the field just being too soft to drive into next spring. Those are some of the trade-offs that farmers have to make when they're deciding whether or not to do deep tillage. Well, one of the reasons a farmer might do deep tillage is if he has our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to stop this tough weed later in the show. Increase your productivity with Hypro's dual react control system. The dual nozzle body design allows you to drive at the speed you want while maintaining the rate and droplet size you need. Hypro, helping you spray better. I need results, so I choose the one system I trust to take weeds down. 
and keep them down on even my toughest acres with the kind of yield potential that helps keep me in the black to deliver my kind of results season after season. I choose the Roundup Ready Extend Crop System. I choose results. It's been remarkable what we've seen out of the varieties of Extend soybeans. The yield has come through for us. We had the best soybean crop we've ever had. The yields were there. With the Roundup Ready Extend crop system, the yield boost and the lack of weed pressure really helps our bottom line. The technology has exceeded my expectations. It's one thing that the industry has been looking for for years. There's nothing like harvesting record crops. There are a lot of steps to having a perfect season. Don't let your fertilizer plant be the step that trips you up. No matter when you apply fertilizer, no matter how, AgroLiquid has the experts and the products that'll help you move closer to your target and hit the bullseye. AgroLiquid moves you closer to your target why do I farm? It's just something I've always wanted to do. Something I've known since I was my daughter's age. When you farm, you have a responsibility to keep it growing. To look at a freshly planted field, a newborn calf, even your bottom line, then ask yourself, how do I help this grow? How can I make it even more productive? I ask myself these questions every day because no matter what I'm doing, I'm still a farmer. If you're looking to expand your farm's grain handling, you want everything to be fast and efficient. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt and a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. That's fast enough to fill a semi in six minutes. Plus, our hood is designed to gently direct the flow of grain straight down, keeping your crop in condition. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. Today, one of the things we want to focus on is pulse crops and how to protect them from root rot. Our topic today actually comes from a pulse crop grower who just said he was having a tremendous problem with root rot in his crops. And the only way it seemed like this problem went away is if he literally did not plant the pulse crops. Eventually, the field would get better if he waited three years, four years, five years before putting pulse crops back out there. Well, let's say you don't wanna wait three, four, five years. What can you do? That's what we're gonna go through today. And I just wanna preface all this by saying the most important thing for any crop against any disease is simply make the crop as healthy as you can. And like for this grower, he was in North Dakota. Well, the number one issue for most farmers in North Dakota is poor drainage. By simply putting drain tile out there, which he was in the process of doing, by the way, that is going to make his crop far more healthy. All right, Brian, you mentioned the drainage, but let's talk about a few of the uh, other factors that are involved in this. Number one, we've got a lot of heavy soils. When we see pulse crops, especially in the northern part of the U.S., a lot of them are going into fields with really heavy soils, high CECs, above 20, some of them even 30 and 40. Well, once you have that heavy a soil, it's just tough to get water to move through. The other thing being in the north is many of those soils are also very cool and cold and wet is a problem. And then a third problem that comes about from that is compaction you're going to have compacted soils if you're forcing it out in the field either in the fall or in the spring uh, trying to get crops in or out in those fields when you've got those conditions you just don't have good root growth and now you've got shallow root growth uh, in an area where there's a lot of disease prevalent because you mentioned hey we need longer rotations if you get a shortened rotation you got more disease pathogen out in the field there's just a number of things here that are going to compound on top of each other and then add to that nutrient deficiencies. Wait, whoa, 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 stop. So you have covered a lot of problems. We got to talk about how to solve these problems. Right. So when we start talking about, again, drainage, tile. I got cold soils, tile. And the reason why tile is so important is because if you get the water out, air warms faster than water. Also, look at your calcium percentage. If you have a tight, poorly drained soil, get more calcium out there. If you do that, calcium is a big molecule compared to magnesium. And 
when you have a high calcium percentage, you will have more air going down through the soil. So it'll warm up, things will lighten up, you'll be in a lot better shape. And the other thing I would throw in there is organic matter. Work on building your soil's organic matter level, and then you will also have less compaction, you'll have a more loose and more tilthy soil, so you'll have fewer problems with root rot. I think this is important, and I, I like that you got into the calcium because taking a complete soil analysis is going to be critical here. To maximize what you're doing, you've got to have a good balance of nutrition. We're seeing too many of these soil tests coming back with extremely low levels of multiple micronutrients. We've got to get those levels built up if we want to be successful and keep that crop healthy. All right, one of the other big things that's happened here for pulse crop growers in just the last few years is Intego Solo, a new product that can help prevent root rot issues. So Intego Solo, that has the active ingredient ethoboxum. This is used in corn, it's used in soybeans, it's used in a lot of different crops. But if you use that in your pulse crops, you most likely are going to see less root rot. Well, we see issues, Brian, like Pythium, for example. It's a water mold. So is a Phanomyces. If we can take care of that water issue, as you had mentioned already with the improvement in drainage, that's going to help us too. Just take away the opportunity for the infection to happen. And if you do that, you've protected your plants against root rot. Finally, don't forget, use a good seed treatment package that will help you an awful lot towards solving root rot issues in pulse crops. Well, seed treatments are nice, Brian, but they won't stop our Weed of the Week. We'll show you what will coming up later in the show. Do you want perfectly conditioned grain, but are worried about the cost to upgrade your bins? With the Grain Temp Guard from Farm Shop MFG, the ideal solution costs less than you think. Preventing your stored grain from spoilage and over drying can save your farm thousands of dollars in grain loss each year. And you can outfit your existing bin system for as little as a few hundred dollars, not thousands like you might expect. But learn more about how to get the low cost grain temp guard system on your bins at farmshopmfg.com. More choices, more money. With Bayer Plus Rewards, you choose from our broad portfolio of high performance products. Earn more money on the eligible products that are right for your farm. And use our new portal to see your purchases, track your rewards, and decide how you want to use them. Visit MyBayerPlus.com to sign in and start earning. That's the advantage of more control in your hands. That's the plus. There are a lot of steps to having a perfect season. Don't let your fertilizer plan be the step that trips you up. No matter when you apply fertilizer, no matter how, AgroLiquid has the experts and the products that'll help you move closer to your target and hit the bullseye. AgroLiquid moves you closer to your target. Tough, precise, efficient. Strip tillage with the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm. Learn more at soilwarrior.com slash agphd. Introducing the all-new Diamant Cornhead from Capello USA. With a revolutionary design highly innovative for its class, we have painstakingly designed every component down to the smallest detail to maximize your harvest efficiency. This gives you unprecedented standards in operation and performance. To get a hands-on look at this beast featuring our new gray poly design, join us at the National Farm Machinery Show in Louisville, Kentucky, February 12th through the 15th. Capello, wherever you are, we are. Your yield will never be higher than the day you put the seed in the ground. So if you put the seed in the ground incorrectly, well, you have dramatically lowered your yield. 
Today we want to talk about just some general planter issues that we see and how to monitor these throughout the season. You know, a couple of the biggest takeaways uh, from our Ag PhD field day the last few years have really been around the planter. And, and one thing that's caught attention from, from farmers all over has been the flag testing. I know Randy Dowdy has been talking about this a lot. Uh, we certainly heard others in the industry talking about flag tests for quite a while. When we're looking at emergence out in fields, we're seeing differences. We aren't seeing the seed all pop up at exactly the same time. This really was evident in 2019 when we saw cold conditions, wet conditions, and just poor planter performance. We saw some seeds popping up several days after others. And when that happens, you're gonna see a difference out in the field all the way through the season with the size of the plant, where the ear is at on the plant, and ultimately the size and yield of that ear. Darren, you mentioned flag test, explain that. Well, when we look at flag tests, what, what we would ask that you give a try to on your farm is get some different color flags and then watch your cornfield at emergence and see, well, when are those seeds popping up? As soon as you see those first seeds popping through the ground, well, use one color of flags. Let's just say it's red. Use red flags and watch what pops up right away first. Maybe you planted 30,000. Mark off one one thousandth of an acre. You should see 30 seeds popping up at about the same time within a few hours. Well, if you're not seeing that, you've got some issues out there. So mark with one color flag the first emergers, then come back 12 hours later, mark the next color, and then come back 12 hours later and mark your final color. Now, the big thing about this is we're using flags that'll be out there all throughout the season. So you wanna make sure they're not 10 foot tall flags. I mean, you can just use little flags that aren't gonna get in the way for any of your field operations. Then you can kind of watch those plants throughout the season. As I mentioned before, Randy Dowdy had been talking about this at our field day for a few years. Uh, so we did this in a number of our fields this year. And the big deal is at harvest time, there's less yield out there with those other color flags for the lady mergers. So the whole point is you want the plants to emerge all at the same time. You don't even have to do a flag test if you don't want to. You can simply go out there at the end of the season and if you find that, hey, most of my ears are all at the same height, but there are a few that are much lower, well, chances are those are the plants that came in later. And what we would encourage you to do is, again, take one one thousandth of an acre and just weigh out all the ears and do that for every row of your planter. So let's say you got a 24 row planter. I realize this can take a little time, but do that for each one of the 24 rows. We did that on our farm. And what we found is we just, the planter was good. We just simply weren't adjusting the planter properly and adjusting it as we went throughout the season. And certainly we had some tough, tough weather conditions and everything else went wrong this year. But we as farmers have the ability to make changes with our planter as we go from field to field, condition to condition. We have to do that because what we were finding is as much as 80 to maybe even 100 bushels per acre difference from row to row. And again, it all starts with are all those plants coming up at the same time? But we're looking at a number of different things here. It could be simply when it's emerging, how it's emerging, if one row was planting too deep, one row was planting too shallow. There are a lot of things you can look at on the planter in terms of performance. Well, it's really changed the way that we farm, Brian, because now when we run a planter, we're gonna have designated people to be behind that planter checking things on Well, let's be row. very specific. So our farm manager has been with us for 25 years. He's been the guy running the planter. And I already told him for next year, Mike, you're not gonna run the planter. You're gonna simply be behind the planter or planters, because we'll probably run two next year. You're gonna be behind both planters all day long, every single day, and we're gonna be making adjustments as we go. Because if you start thinking about a variance of 80 bushels or 100 bushels, or even 40 bushels difference from row to row, Boy, if we can fix that, how many dollars is that? It's enormous. We can have a very high priced person doing nothing but making sure that planter is set just right and it will by far pay off in the long run. The other thing is keeping an eye on those parts that need to be replaced fairly often. If you're farming 50 acres and you've got a 24 row planter, well, you're probably not gonna have to replace parts very often. But let's face it, many of the farms today are getting bigger and there's so many acres that we're putting on these replaceable parts, we need to be replacing them sooner. In some cases, we may need to be replacing some things during the growing season, not waiting till the end of the year and seeing what stuff looks like. So we do wanna keep an eye on that as we're going. I get it, 
planting season is super busy, you're just crazy busy, you can't possibly imagine another job, but when it's a job that pays you this much money, you have to take a look at it. We're going to continue talking about planters and, and just different things you should be doing with your planter over the course of the winter and into the spring. But the reason why we wanted to bring this up today is so at least you get started thinking about this, that you know what? If you can do a better job with each individual row of that planter and get as many of the seeds out of the ground at the same time as possible, you absolutely will have more yield. Well, one other thing that always helps you get more yield is stopping our Weed of the Week. We'll show you what will get it under control coming up next. The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Corteva AgriScience, Agriculture Division of Dow DuPont. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough. But we're tougher. With unrivaled weed control. Reduced drift. And near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? <laughs> Weed of the Week is a tough perennial, it's Virginia Ground Cherry. Well, it's interesting that we're right in this particular field, Brian, because it's the first field where I ever saw Virginia Ground Cherry. When I was a kid, I thought this was Black Nightshade, and I heard my dad saying, oh, we got this new weed on our farm, Black Nightshade, it's terrible in the soybeans, we gotta get it under control. Well, I didn't know what that weed was, and this one kind of had a darker color to it, and I thought, oh, well, maybe that's it. And so we did the best job we could wiping it out, and I brought some back to show dad and I said, look, we got black nightshade out there and we got it under control. And he's like, I'm glad you got that weed under control, but that is Virginia ground cherry and not black nightshade. The big difference here is Virginia ground cherry is a perennial weed. So if you go out there and you're trying to pull it up, you might not even be able to pull it up. Uh, the other thing that I always found with black nightshade when we were growing up is the black nightshade plants seemed to have some little holes in them and it was a little bit more purple, but yeah, it was kind of difficult to distinguish, especially when the plants were small. Well, when you look at Virginia ground cherry, again, it's a perennial weed. So as soon as we had Roundup Ready soybeans back 20, 30 years ago, hey, no problem. We sprayed Roundup and we wiped it out. But I will say this, it does take a higher rate. And since Virginia ground cherry is kind of a smooth plant, it does take using some additives. We really saw a benefit adding a spreader sticker in with the Roundup to try to get this one under control. And keep your water rate low. We talk about it all the time with Roundup when you have plants that aren't going to absorb a lot of product, keep the water rate down, keep the roundup rate up, so you've got more concentrated droplets. You know, it's a perennial weed. We don't really see any of the pre-emerged products, unless they're burned down products, having a big effect on Virginia ground cherry. However, I would say this, if you do use the three pre's and soybeans, you've got less other weeds out there, so it's easier to get that coverage on Virginia ground cherry. And then really the only thing that's 100% effective is roundup. When we go to corn, I look at status works pretty well. Certainly dicamba or 2,4-D in the appropriate crops for soybeans will work fine. And then when we go over to wheat, yes, you certainly could use some 2,4-D. Personally, I would suggest using some husky to just burn it back, but start with sharpened pre-emerge. Start with a pre-emerge program of some type of burn down thing, usually just a high rate of Roundup. Well, that's all the time we have for our Weed of the Week Virginia Ground Cherry, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Every day, we rise. We face the pressure, the uncertainty. Sometimes the decisions we make seem as tough as the work we do. Let the Acceleron portfolio lighten your load with a powerful array of seed treatments, fungicides, insecticides, nematicides, and bioenhancers offered in select combinations to give you coverage with one simple decision. Looking for a little peace of mind? We're on it. It's no secret that Mother Nature doesn't always cooperate with your schedule. Field conditions in recent years kept many from timely planting and fertilizing. And when you can't get your fertilizer applied, you lose thousands of dollars in yield potential. If you need flexibility in your fertility application timing, you need a drop tube system from CNR Supply. CNR drop tubes allow you to apply liquid nitrogen in season and place it exactly where your crop needs it. To learn more about low-cost CNR drop tube solutions, visit crsupply.com. 
It starts with genetics, what you're made of. It takes agronomy. It's local. It's knowing your land and having the tools to put the right product in the right place. It's built on service with trust, grit, and determination. Because it turns out, what it takes to make the best product is a lot like what it takes to make a farmer. Golden Harvest, rooted in genetics, agronomy, and service. More choices, more money. With Bayer Plus Rewards, you choose from our broad portfolio of high-performance products. Earn more money on the eligible products that are right for your farm. And use our new portal to see your purchases, track your rewards, and decide how you want to use them. Visit MyBayerPlus.com to sign in and start earning. That's the advantage of more control in your hands. That's the plus. How much does your crop residue cost you? Over time, residue accumulates in your fields, building excess carbon levels and tying up your plant available nitrogen. Residue also traps P, K, and micros and can take years to naturally become available to your crops. This is because soil lacks the diverse microbial life needed to break it all down. With Decomp, you can naturally restore life to your soil and allow the release of valuable crop fertility. Learn how it works at decomp.us. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. Why do I farm? It's just something I've always wanted to do. Something I've known since I was my daughter's age. When you farm, you have a responsibility to keep it growing. To look at a freshly planted field, a newborn calf, even your bottom line. Then ask yourself, how do I help this grow? How can I make it even more productive? I ask myself these questions every day because no matter what I'm doing, I'm still a farmer. My dad was a stickler for maintenance, especially when it came to batteries. As I came to learn later in life, whenever someone was really fussy about something, it was likely because things had gone wrong before. We'll talk about what can go wrong with batteries in today's Iron Talk and share a few simple tips to help your farm. Growing up on a grain and livestock farm in the northern United States, we had to deal with cold winter temperatures. Since we had livestock to take care of, there were no excuses that would justify not getting equipment to run. One of the key lessons we needed to learn was how batteries work because we needed them to get the tractors started. They say a good battery should last five or even eight years with proper care and operation, but you certainly can't take that for granted. Test the batteries that you have before they fail. On our farm, that always meant right before harvest, right before the cold of winter, and ahead of planting time. If a battery won't hold the charge, replace it. Next, when choosing a battery, get one that fits the way you'll use it. Let's face it, you're operating off-road, so you need to pick a battery specifically built to handle that type of operation. Next, keep your batteries clean. A damp rag is typically sufficient to wipe off acid and junk that can cause a battery to run out of power more quickly. Keep your batteries filled to recommended levels with distilled water. And finally, disconnect batteries when not in use. And this is a big one to my dad. Now, some farmers have had good luck using a trickle charger or using a maintenance charger to keep batteries full of juice and ready to go. Now these are two different things. With the trickle charger, you need to still unhook it to avoid overcharging. The maintenance charger is almost a hook the battery up and forget it kind of thing. Use caution with either of these chargers and strictly follow the manufacturer's recommendations for use. Take care of your battery and it will take care of you this winter and throughout the season. That's all for today's Iron Talk and now back to the show. That's our time for today, but before we go, we want to invite you to check out the Ag PhD Winter Workshops. You can just go to agphd.com to learn more. We'd love to have you join us at one of our free winter workshops. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD.